Hey guys, and welcome back to Divine Journey 2. Last episode, we visited the last Divine RPG dimension, Mortem. We also automated the Roots Elemental Soil, and set up a much more efficient way of producing elevated ingots. As well as setting all the filters for the remaining Essentia that we are able to create, we do still have three remaining that we still have to fill in today. So having a look at our quest book here, we are actually almost finished with chapter 19 and Thomcraft. And in Mortem, we actually picked up the item that we needed to unlock Bewitchment. So yeah, the goal for this episode is to progress through chapter 20 and make a start into this Bewitchment mod. I've actually never played with this before. So yeah, looking forward to seeing what this holds. Many of the Bewitchment items actually do take a lot of thumb crafting. So to help with that, we're going to make three infusion speed stones. Oh, these stones are actually very expensive uh, V cost wise. They cost 500 each. And this is going to take a while for it to regenerate. So I guess we'll come back and make the rest later on. But we can put these speed stones underneath our runic matrix and, well, speed up the crafting. <laughs> So yeah, the first step in chapter 20 is to make a couple of seeds. One of those is mandrake seeds, and the other is hellbor seeds, which is actually one of the seeds we need for Diabolus, one of the remaining essentia types we're missing here. All right, so having a look at the ingredients for these seeds, we need some mystical agriculture seeds, actually, that we haven't crafted yet. And these require tier three crafting seeds, and also intermedium essence. I don't think we've made intermedium yet. And to make intermedium, we need to make the infusion crystal for the next tier. So currently we have the Infernium Infusion Crystal. We have to upgrade this in the Runic Altar with some Salus Mundus and Prudentium so that we can create Intermedium. So we're going to make up a few more of these Infusion Crystals. I have a feeling they are actually used up in the recipe. And now we can put in our recipe for the Infusion Crystal. And burst it with a lot of mana. <laughs> Progress. <laughs> Progress indeed. Yeah, so that unlocked a quest in chapter 16 here for Mystical Agriculture, and we should now have access to all of the tier 3 seeds here. Alright, so coming back to these Bewitchment seeds for the Mandrake, we need a Creeper seed. And since the Creeper is tier 3, we first have to make our tier 3 crafting seed up from the tier 2, and then from the tier 1. And I did batch craft a bunch of the tier 1s, so we have a hundred of these tier 1 crafting seeds. That should last us for a little while, <laughs> and at least we don't have to wait on the Ender Crafter. We do, however, still have to wait on Thumbcraft here, so let's get this thing going. At least now we have access to these Essentia mirrors that we built last episode. We no longer have to move these jars around manually. We are also going to need some condensed V crystals. So these creeper chunks along with the seeds are also tier 3, which we have to infusion craft with the tier 2, and this comes from the runic altar, is similar to the seeds actually. And the tier 1 comes from mob trophies. And a long time ago, I did filter these trophies into our mob farm, so we have a handful of each. Plus, we have quite a lot from our Enderman farm. Yeah, getting the trophies is not really a big issue. I think we have to just pulverize these things. And we'll just batch craft these chunks, since we'll need a lot of them in the future. So <laughs> I've ordered a couple of hundred to be crafted here. Then we need our runic altar recipe. And then the infusion crafting recipe. So yeah, it's a lot of setup here to, in the beginning, but once we have some of these recipes set up, it'll be easy to craft the future seeds. <laughs> Also, yeah, I'm really glad that I did actually decide to automate Essentia before moving on to Bewitchment, as having to melt all of these aspects manually for all of this infusion crafting would have literally taken hours, so <laughs> at least this way we have the Essentia available to us. Let's see if we can get our other speed stone by now. No, we're still waiting on some V in this chunk. Alright, so we've almost got our creeper seeds. The other thing we don't have out of this recipe... Actually, do we have a cinder pearl? We don't have a cinder pearl. Okay, we're gonna have to go out and find one of those things. But the other part we need for this recipe is this biothomic mind, and we don't quite have the research for this yet. And to unlock it, we have to examine something brainy. Okay, what, what could that be? Don't tell me we need to spawn golems for this. Does the zombie brain work? Let's try scanning this thing. Aha, nice. Alright, that gave us some warp, I think. But that did unlock the research for biothomic minds. Alright, that was a lot of crafting, and we're still not done yet. 
we managed to get the mandrake seeds and this cinder pearl actually took me a long time to find in that desert. We also did make a few more of the infusion stones for the runic altar, but we're still missing some items for this hellbore seed. And that is these nether seeds from mystical agriculture. I think I'm actually going to make a few of these and we'll add them into our farm. This will be useful for things like soul sand. We're getting from our builder, but it's, it'll be nice to have a fully renewable source of this. So to make these seeds, we need some nether clusters, which is made in the Hellfire Forge, some compressed nether rack and dark solarium, and then more runic altar crafting, and then the fire seeds is incendium. But this thing, we do, we definitely have these on passive by now. So we just need recipes for all of these things. Starting with the clusters, I guess. And then the fire seeds, and finally the nether seeds. So yeah, we're going to add one of these nether seeds to our farm here, along with the fire seed, I guess. Oh, and we can make our fourth and final speed stone. Actually, this is the third speed zone. We have one cost stone. But yeah, those nether seeds were the last pieces that we need for our bewitchment seeds. And we're off. <laughs> oh man, that's a lot of Essentia to be pulling in. Right, we're almost there with this craft. Just the items to be infused. Aha, finally. <laughs> that was a long start to this chapter. Alright, so now it wants us to make the witch's oven. And definitely something I think we'll have to automate. I mean, there is only a few pages of recipes here, but I've seen these items in a lot of the late game crafts. But first we should plant our seeds and have them farmed. The question is though, where do we plant these things? I mean, we are maxed out on this farm. All right, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna move this tree farm. And instead of planting the trees here, we're gonna grow our bewitchment seeds. And we'll add another plant gatherer and sewer combination to add trees on top. And these things are gonna absolutely need some conduit binder. <laughs> this looks so ugly. But we can fix it. Alright, so these mandrake and hellbore seeds are going to need their own output drawers. So mandrake seeds, mandrake root, hellbore seeds, and hellbore. Also, we can add our hellbore seeds to create our diabolus essence. And that will be one more essentia we don't have to worry about. Alright, so we have to wait on our mandrake and hellbore building up. But the recipe for this witch's oven actually does require an athomium essentia smellery. Along with some more morphic resonators, lots of essentia down here, and two mortem chunks. I think we should have all the mortem chunks, but we have to build some smelleries, and I've been meaning to do this for quite a while. I've kind of been dreading this and putting it off a little bit, as we need to make like hundreds of thomium plates and 82 alchemical constructs. If we're going to make one of these thomium essentia smelleries, we may as well upgrade them all at once, <laughs> so I think I might just do that actually. Let's see how long this is going to take me. Hello there. <laughs> oh no, this is not a good sign. What am I looking at here? I think I may have forgotten a row of glass up the top there. So I'm going to try to keep this guy isolated. Hopefully he doesn't do too much damage to this thing. This could get very dangerous. <laughs> Anyways, with the crafting, we are almost there. So we have all of the thomium actually, and the brass plates. We're actually just missing a couple of alchemical constructs, and then we have our thomium essentia smelleries. So I made a couple of improvements actually to make this a bit easier. Last episode I mentioned about this emptying Essentia transfuser, and I thought this was gated, but it turns out that we can actually make this thing. But yeah, check this out. If we put in our catalyst for brass, this thing automatically pulls it from the jars. Look how awesome that is. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, I just loaded this hopper up with like four stacks of brass and four stacks of elementium, and that meant I could just leave this thing running because we have our Essentia automated basically. Unfortunately, I did have to click this runic matrix like 80 times to make all these alchemical constructs. But we almost have the amount we need. Oh, and this thing looks like it's getting bigger as well. Oh, that's not good. Yeah, you know what? Let's not make any more Thomcraft mess. <laughs> Let's craft the one we need right now. So we're going to need another purifier and cauldron. And request our 40 second Essentia Smellery. And now we can create the first of many Thomium Essentia Smelleries, which should be a quest. But after farming Mortem for one more Mortem chunk, I think we now have everything we need for the Witch's Oven. Man, that's a lot of Essentia again. <laughs> oh, and also it's been some time since the last clip, and this guy over that was over here seems to have disappeared, so I'm, I'm not complaining about that. That's fine by me, he must have uh, chewed up all the flux that was in this junk. Aha, we got our trophy. Is a quest. Oh, it wants us to make empty jars as well. Yeah, I have no clue what these are used for, but I guess we're going to figure this mod out together. Alright, so to make empty jars, it looks like we have to use unfired jars, which is made from the glass files from Thomcraft. Let's make up a decent amount of these things. Yeah, and it's fairly quick to craft. This isn't a lot of essential to use. Nice, so there is our quest. Let's see what else we have to do here. Alright, so it looks like we have to also get the distillery. Oh, and this takes another witch's oven. <laughs> of course it takes another witch's oven. 
All right, well, I have to farm a bunch more Mortem Junks, and I think, actually, I was having a peek at some of the other recipes. We need a few more Mortem Junks for the Witch's Cauldron, and also more Alchemical Constructs. So yeah, I'm going to go back and grab a few of these things, at least. And then I guess we'll have to make another few extra Essentia Smelleries. Man, this is a lot of setup just to get into Bewitchment. Uh, three Enhanced Vats as well. All right, Witch's Oven number two. So we got the three enhanced vats, the second witch's oven. This also does require two fill-in essentia transfusers, which actually are more expensive than the emptying ones that we have on the stomatorium. Since these things take uh, this slurry pump, luckily we do have the research for all this stuff, even the arcane bellows. Right now I'm just making up some more magical leather, and I'm just going to make over a stack of this stuff. <laughs> I have a feeling we're going to use it, so yeah. While I was in Mortem, I did also pick up some more sodium that we need for the transfusers. These take two each, and I only have four, so I'm uh, I'm really hoping this is going to be enough. But there's four arcane bellows. Actually, that's only three. <laughs> We're missing air crystals. Four arcane bellows, and two fill-in essentia transfusers. All right, so those should be the last two pieces we need for the distillery. We need three blocks of opal. We have thousands of this stuff, luckily. <laughs> the three enhanced vats, the two transfusers, and the witch's oven. Go. All right, so once we have all of this stuff, eventually... <laughs> We have to also think about a place where we want to put bewitchment things. And so since I don't know exactly what's going to be required, I'd like to pick a space that doesn't sort of box us in. So I think we're going to put our bewitchment things over in this little area over here. Or maybe on this side, actually. Hmm. All right, distillery. <laughs> okay, let's start setting all of these things up. All right, so one of the first things we have to make with our witch's oven is the Ebb of Death, Essence of Vitality, and Acacia Resin. The Ebb of Death is made with the Cypress Sapling. I think it has to specifically be this type of sapling. The Acacia is made with the Acacia Sapling, and the Vitality is made with Juniper. And all of these three things, it looks like, are used very heavily, so I think that also means we should be farming those trees. So we do already have the Juniper Sapling. Unfortunately, we don't have any Cypress. It looks like we can get it in the Overworld or the Twilight Forest. I don't recall seeing this tree though, but there is that many of these trees in this mod pack that, uh, yeah. Wait, is this it? No, that's juniper. We already have juniper. Ah, found it. Found it. <laughs> we were like a couple of thousand blocks away, but we got one. So to farm these extra two trees, I, th I have a feeling we're also going to need some more in the future. <laughs> so um, I've tacked on another tree farm here and we have another plant gather and sower combination. So in here, we're going to add juniper and the cypress. And we're also going to add Elder Saplings, which is another sapling from Bewitchment. And I think we need this for some of the rituals. Oh, and for the Droplet of Wisdom, yeah. So we're going to need all three of these saplings from Bewitchment. So let's just give these some bone meal just to get them going. And we'll have to also add the drawer for these as well. So it looks like these trees also drop Juniper Berries and Elder Berries. I'm not sure if the Cypress also has a berry, but we'll leave space in the drawer here for it. Alright, so we can give our Witch's Oven the empty jars. We need some sort of furnace fuel for this, so I'm going to use Blaze Rods. And we can toss in our saplings. And we get some wood ash and the ebb of death. I think the wood ash is going to be beneficial for the rituals and also distilling. Oh, did we only get one ebb of death? Wait, did that eat my other sapling? <laughs> Wait, are these chance outputs maybe? We seem to not always be getting this essence. We'll have to investigate that a bit more. Oh, and I guess we're also going to need the acacia saplings too. Well, let's also add these to our farm. Luckily, we do have space for this. I wonder if there's a way to speed up the switches oven. I have a feeling we may have to add multiple of these things. Alright, so we got our essential resins and jars here. The next one is for... oh, more seeds. <laughs> Alright, so all of these seeds look like they are similar in crafting. We need two more niter for each one, more biothomic mines, uh, the nether quartz seed, and the wormwood seed is a similar sort of a recipe. We need rubber seeds for this from mystical agriculture, and belladonna takes guardian seeds. Well, I guess we got even more crafting to do. <laughs> it's already been hours of crafting just to get the few, first few quests in Bewitchment. On the plus side, we do actually need this Aconitum Seed for Mortis. Alright, three more Clockwork Mines. And three more Biothomic Mines. I guess we'll also need some more Niter for this. And the first one is just finished. Alright, so now for all the Mystical Agriculture Seeds. So we're going to need four Mob Chunks. I think the first one is just finished. Even with the Speedstones though, this takes forever. <laughs> Man, there's so much infusion crafting. Alright, so we got our four guardian mob chunks. I'm only a tier three seed to put all this together. We got already the rubber seeds, we just have to make the nether quartz seeds. In fact, we'll need two tier three seeds for this. Let's order another one. Alright, that's our aqua crystal. I think we can make our guardian seeds now. Oh wait, there's still stuff on those pedestals. 
Oh, that's right. I did request another seed. Yeah, we, I guess we have to wait on that again. But I think I got everything else for these bewitchment seeds that we need. All right, now we got all the seeds. We got the nether quartz, the guardian, and the rubber. And now we can start putting these bewitchment seeds together. So we need two acacia resin, one rubber seed in the center, two black nitre, and the mysterious leaking soul. Oh, and the biothomic mind. All right, this should be the third and final seed that we need. <laughs> we already got the wormwood and the aconitum. And now I guess we'll also have to add these ones to our farm. I wonder if there's any more. It wouldn't really surprise me. <laughs> I can see another sapling over here. Mm, I don't see any more seeds though in these quests. All right, let's get these planted here. So I was trying to like figure out here if we could actually take down some of these things. And I think we actually need everything that we're farming here. So now it looks like we have to make uh, a bunch more of these vials in the distillery. Let's first go to the left quests over here, which is to make oak, birch, and spruce. Oh man, do we need? <laughs> do we have to farm all these as well? I think maybe the vanilla ones we can get from nature and wood essence. So I think we'll actually just do that instead. Okay, the oak one we can get from dark oak, which we have hundreds of thousands of. Yeah, so in that case we'll add a crafter for birch saplings. And also one for spruce. And now we have the items on passive that we need for these spirit, soul, and spruce hearts. I don't actually know what to call these things, they all have different names, so I don't know, I'm just going to call them jars. Also, now that we have those bewitchment seeds, we can actually add them to the final two Essentia smelleries. And that completes passive automation of all 41 different types of Essentia. So this one is going to be Wormwood Seeds, and this we want for Spiritus. And we'll make sure to void the Herba here. And the Aconitum plant we can add for the Mortis tray here. Yeah, this witch's oven is way too slow to be doing things on demand. The only question is, I don't know about the input and outputs of this. Since we need a slot for the furnace fuel, the input, and also the empty jar. And there's also two output slots, so it's not it's not quite as easy as some of like a thermal machine or something. And the next quest for us is to make yet another altar. <laughs> so this is going to be the bewitchment altar. So I think we need it for the, the cauldron over here, and we also need it for some of these chalks and the rituals later on. So it's going to be quite important to get a, a decent altar set up. But first of all, we have to craft our altar, and we need, I think, six blocks. So this is going to take six different incense altars, some elderwood, which we're farming, a bunch of essentia, and these spirits that we just made. So can we request six incense altars? Gold promise acceptor and forged cincinnasite. Well, the promise acceptor is just some empowered glod. And the forged cincinnasite block, we can just add a crafting recipe for. We should probably do it in a sequential fabricator, but we only create these every once in a while, so it's okay doing it with the lava buckets. We are short a little bit of cincinnasite ore, though. Also, as I'm recording this episode, I'm not entirely sure how it's going to turn out. I mean, a lot of this is just me crafting and gathering materials, which is a big part of the game, but, I mean, there's a lot for the start of Bewitchment here. A lot of things I didn't actually expect to run into today. And I have a feeling that's going to happen more and more as this pack goes on. So I was toying with the idea of changing the upload schedule to once every day and a half, or maybe even two days. Just so that I could try to get the video quality a bit better, and avoid having to repeat things and, like, craft things over and over. Well, there's a ghast. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about that. I am absolutely loving this pack at this point. I mean, I think I've said before, but the more I play this pack, I think the more fun it gets, the more the later the chapters go on. Uh, still not sure about Bewitchment though, but we'll save judgment on that thing. But yeah, creating an episode nowadays takes probably double the amount of time it took back in episode 1 to 10. So yeah, that was the reason I was toying with the idea of changing the upload schedule. But now we're just waiting on the last incense all our crafting. Well, we are waiting for some of these Runic Matrix crafts, since we already have the materials for some of these things. Let's start to upgrade our Essentia smelleries. Wait, was the recipe not like this? Oh, we were just missing the V crystals. Yeah, each one of these upgrades takes 40 Ignis, so yeah. <laughs> I wish there was a way to automatically refill this table. To have access to all of the V crystals, I've just added them to this ME interface here. But yeah, slowly I'll keep upgrading these to the Thaumium versions. And I think we've got one more altar to create here. Alright, so according to the quest book here, this altar has a 16 block radius, and we need to put all of our cauldrons, distilleries, spinning wheels, and circle rights within the 16 blocks. But I think it kind of makes sense to have this in the centre here. I think we can put our altar around here, and then we have to put some carpet on top, and this completes our multi-block. To increase the power that this thing generates, we can put various different items. These are listed in the quest book here. So we can put things like diamond swords, an end rod, uh, weather skeleton skulls, flower pots, and we can stick a candelabra on here as well. Alright, so now I think we want to 
continue our quest book and we'll come back for the automation later. Yeah, I kind of want to see what else is going to be required of us just before we start building out this room and then have to tear it all down. So we need liquid witchcraft and a droplet of wisdom. This is with, yeah, this is what we need the elder saplings for. And this one is just mandrake. All right, so that now unlocks the quest for the cauldron. So this we do need our altar for, and we also have to craft this thing, but we, do, we did kind of anticipate this. So we already have the mortem chunks and the alchemical constructs, and we just got access to this liquid witchcraft and droplet of wisdoms. And we're off. <laughs> we're crafting the witch's cauldron. Nice. Itching for more witching. <laughs> I like that. So this witch's cauldron obviously requires water inside, and it does consume the water whenever you craft with this thing. However, we can't just pipe water straight into the side of this machine. Instead, we have to have a mechanical user right-click the water bucket with it. Alright, but I think the first thing we want to make with this is tallow. So I need to learn how this thing works, so we need three magic tallow, crystallos, and presidium. And the tallow in this pack is just made with blocks of flesh. Actually, I think this might be a default recipe. Oh yeah, I'm just going to batch craft this stuff. Okay, so I'm not sure if we're going to have enough altar power for this to work. And I also don't know if we need any sort of catalyst for this, but I'm willing to waste one of each of these materials. <laughs> so I think it was, was it three magic tallow? Yeah, three tallow, one crystallos, one presidium. Oh, and we are missing fire underneath. We have to get this thing boiling. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah, so now we can see it's boiling. Let's try to do this craft now. Did that work? It changed color, for sure. We may not have enough altar power for this. Yeah, that's what the issue was. So <laughs> I went a little bit crazy with the trees. I basically just planted everything that I could. Yeah, 1087 altar power, and I believe the times 7 is the multiplier on the recharge rate, which is affected by the items you put on top of this altar. So now when we throw our magic tallow in, we get our bewitchment tallow. And also, I've been messing with this integrated dynamic setup. Basically what happens is the mechanical user, when it gets the empty bucket, will actually pick it up from the witch's cauldron. So yeah, I'm not actually sure how you're supposed to read from this cauldron. Since it doesn't have any internal tank data, maybe you have to read with the MBT data instead. But one of the other things we need for the quest is a bottle of blood. And this unlocks the brew of the void. And this brew of the void is, well, quite the brew here. Yeah, so we have to put all the things we made today together, plus some thomium, mycelium, and vitium V crystals. So yeah, nine items to create this brew of the void. <laughs> Let's make sure we do this properly the first time. Make sure we have enough altar power. So now we can toss in the bottle of blood, belladonna, aconitum, wormwood, two thomium, mycelium, and two vitium. And we got brew of the void. And this Brew of the Void quest actually opens up chapter 21, which is the rest of Thomcraft for us. And just looking through this, there are some really, really nice options we have access to, almost. We almost have the Wireless Infinity card, uh, Tier 3 Extended Crafting, oh, and the Auto Infusion Matrix Multi-Block. No more waiting on the Runic Altar. <laughs> Although, I guess we've still got a while to go before we can get to this point. But yeah, with that, I think we're going to wrap up here for today. The start of Bewitchment took me a lot longer than what I expected, but I'll do a bunch of research and things between episodes and we'll get all this figured out for next time. We did manage to finish off the passive automation of all of the Essentia, and I guess we added a few, few more seeds to our mystical agriculture farm, which in the near future actually will be completely rebuilding. But yeah, that is going to do us for today. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some more Divine Journey 2.